one of the things I first do when I get a car, I get my uh, little clipboard out, just uh, and, and go around the wheel stations each corner and see what they're like. So first of all, we'll check the bearings and have a quick look down there and see if these wheels are running true, they're not buckled. Steering's good. Oh, bit of play on the top, bolt, top pin. Let's have a look at this one. Tiny bit on the top pin on that one. And this one. No, that one's fine. That'll, that'll live another day on that corner. So the next thing, drop the oils out. Now there is something I want to show you specifically around the rear axles. Actually I should have said both axles, not just the rear. Um, what we're going to look for, we're going to drop the plug out the bottom of the diff and see if it glugs or paws properly. Uh, my lift isn't just a hang it up, but let's, uh, let's whiz this out. first vent. The plug's been bent over. I'll have to get the die grinder out and clean it up. So uh, by using the die grinder this small bit in here on the end you know we managed to clean up the square. We. Me and you. <laughs> so now we're just going to whiz that plug out. And here we go. See how it glugs? It should pour out quite evenly. The oil is quite clean actually. There you see. It's a bit, a bit of a bad idea because there's a flat at the bottom here and it's not quite right. You know, like nice and level. Other things we observe while we're looking under here. Let me think. The uh, airframe joint has been changed at some time. Rubber's looking a bit in Not. Something. I can't remember. That's it. So what we're going to do also, we're going to do some observations like for inspection. Uh, the shocker bushes need replacing, they're a bit split. Bump stops are on, which is rare. Um, I'm just looking around this back area. The wiring, well, the, the wire and the insulation's come off and it's come off its clip. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to tape all that lock back up before I clip it up. Same at the top, I'll put some tape around it all. If you can... Ooh, that's a bit wibbly wobbly, wouldn't it? You can see here, the wiring's all sort of open, so I'll clean all that up. The back plates are looking good, there's no leaks. Same at both sides. I'm just going to grab a 14mm and we'll check out that, um, that breather. These breathers can be a bit of a problem. Uh, what happens is it's condensation that gets in the top and the rust out, there's a little hole inside. But this one has been particularly naughty because it's not coming loose and I think this is the problem. Let me go and get uh, some part pliers. So I've put, uh, I've put some pliers on this joint, this, this breather. There we go. Just to stop prevent breaking the pipe. <laughs> it seems to be quite rusty. These are usually finger tight. This one isn't. This one's all the way. Why are we sort of doing this? Well, I don't know why we're here, I don't know. But if the, ble if the breather's blocked, uh, it will pressurise the, the uh, casing inside the housing, the diff, and it'll start to blow the seals out all over the place, the front nose and the uh, hubs. Because it, when you've got uh, this thick gear oil, and gets under pressure, it forms and builds pressure up. And pressure has to go somewhere. 
So they let it out through this little valve, this little uh, pipe here. It's quite common for them to be missing, you know, plugged up or... The old series were a particularly tr troublesome. Right, that's that off. Mm -hmm. Well, something fell off there, I don't know what that was. Anyway, this is crude. Ooh, it's blocked up solid. <laughs> um, people might not like that technique, but it certainly works. <laughs> so let's try and get that out. Put some uh, some spray penetrating oil on that. It's not often I'm wrong, but this time I'm right. There's the breather, and I don't know if you can see here, the hole's blocked up there. So what I'm going to do is get a little drill, drill that out, and then it'll be fixed. I cleaned that up, and it's nice and clean now. But I observed that this pipe. I don't know if you can see, probably not, wait a minute, I'll turn the light around a bit. Of course working outside the garage door. Uh, no, you probably can't see that, but the pipe that goes into here, bloody blinding light, I can't see a damn thing. There we go. This piece here has blocked in here with the rust. So, I've cut it off and I'm going to show you how you put them back on again. Easy. To get the uh, fitting back on, you can see up there. To get the fitting back on, I've used one of these uh, plumber's flaring tools. They say it's for brake pipe, but it's absolutely useless for that. And uh, I've clamped the pipe in. I've bared back a bit of the um, original protection on there. And I cut this as short as I could to the stub end of the pipe. Thus, here. <laughs> now, if you notice, I've put a, a 10 millimeter bolt through there. And that's to protect it a bit, to stop it crushing. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that into there, like that, and I'm going to support it here. There. And there we've got our new end on. If you can, if you can zoom into that. So there's the uh, there's the fitting in place. Look, you see, it's all nice and clean now. So now we've got a couple of copper washers. Get the dirt off. See, there's plenty of pipe. Oops, you can't see, can you? <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute, Tiger. There we go. That's better. So there was plenty of pipe. Put that onto there. Because we've got bare metal on there, we just put a little bit of PB blaster on just to protect it a bit more. And that is that. Job done. So now that axle will never leak again. Um, other things we've got to observe for is the brake pipes. These are really, really good. Uh, yeah, this wants a good waxing underneath just to save it. So I've dropped the oil out of there. I'm quite happy with that. It's not going to get any better. It's not going to get any worse. So I'm going to take the plug, put it back in, and then. Looks like that plug's there a bit full of dirt. Then we're going to take the plug out of here. Oh, 
and then we're going to fill it up. Now I always leave the plugs on the floor under the truck, so I remember. So I, rem I put the floor, plug on the floor, so I remember under the diff there's no oil in it. Uh, so that's good. I'm now going to move on and do the rest of the axles and gearboxes, but I just wanted to show you that. And it was a great example because that's how they are typically. On the series trucks, they had a little ball valve in there. They're notorious for sticking. And that's why they came up with this idea. But, again, 1990s truck, pff, I bet it's never been touched. So let's get along and get push along and get the uh, oils changed, or well, the oils drained. Uh, well, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do the axle now, the, fr the front axle. And then I'll show you how to do the gearbox. Front axle was very much the same. This was a little bit blocked in this breather up here. I just got a bit of wire and poked it out so I didn't have to do too much to it. Uh, initial observations, what we're looking at. This has been replaced at some time, this uh, panhard rod. Must have been bashed. But what we're looking at while the oil's draining, we're going to look at things, simple things like uh, the wheels, we're looking at the swivels, they're nice and dry, nice and clean. Uh, I'm going to sort of drop the oil out of these as well, or, or they might be greased, I'm not sure. Uh, making sure the back plates are tight, yeah they're nice and rattly. The discs, well they could do with a good old drive, same both sides. Um, looseness in bushes, in um, we're looking for looseness in bushes in the uh, damper, that's okay. These are all nice and tight, nothing on there. The panhard rods, I know you should put a bar in them but they look perfect. These bolts have been out before, been replaced. We're looking for cuts and rips on the, uh, the rubbers of all these joints, they're all, all nice and fine. Um, it's had a bit of work done to this, but uh, it's looking really clean. In fact, uh, you know, to tell you the honest truth, there's no reason why it won't pass inspection. Um, so, we know the oil's good in there. So the next thing we're going to do is drain our oil bucket off and go and have a look at the gearbox. So we're going to drain the gearbox off. We're going to look for the same uh, issues with glugging and things like that. We want a 24mm key on here or a socket and up here is a 32mm. Now I'm just going to move the camera out of the way a little bit because you know what's going to happen, we're going to have oil everywhere. Uh, just take that light down a bit. The filter's under here, the oil filter for the gearbox. Oh, well that wasn't very tight, was it? I expected hammer in that one. Right, let's see if we've got gluggability. Now this is a bit, this might glug a bit, the way the gearbox is laid out. This is where we find all sorts of bearings and bits and pieces. Oh no, that's good. See how it's flowing nice and fast? That means the breather's okay. Look at that lovely oil in there. This has got, this has got nothing done on this. This is usually all black. But we don't know, you see. Get a pair of pliers and we'll pull that filter out. Yeah, look at that. Lovely. Good gearbox. Well, <laughs> it seems to be. Now I tend to drain these off from here first, rather than the side, because the side one tends to spray all over the damn floor. We'll leave that for a minute and uh, see how it comes on. I decided to go and get some lunch while I was waiting for the, for the uh, oil to drain. Now you're supposed to put a new gasket on the plug, this plug here, we ain't got none. But I, came, I cleaned out the filter, you get paw prints all over it. 
It doesn't have to be monster tape. But then again, it doesn't want to drop out. Damn, got oil everywhere. It's always good to go around, you know, like when you get a, a Land Rover, a used one, just to give it a, a really good, thorough, you know, service and check. Because uh, sometimes, it, you know, all oh, these are roughly toughy vehicles. They've never been looked at for years. Yeah, the, the, the big bubble on the side is a 32mm. Ah, that's good news. Uh, we always get a little bit of furry stuff on the uh, magnet. It's not the end of the world. But no matter how many times you change your oil, you've always got a, bit of, got a bit of fluff on there. So we'll take that off. Make sure it's nice and clean again. Should put new washers on. We ain't got none. Uh, I've used all my washers up. <laughs> I don't know why they have two bungs on when they've got this one here. <laughs> Seems pointless, really, doesn't it? Bad right, lander, isn't it? Mind you, I think these uh, were designed for. Rover cars without the extension on. There, I've got to snug them up. Next thing, we'll go and get a spanner for the uh, trans trans transfer. Transfer bung is here. It's not usually all that tight. I've seen people strip these out there with an air gun. Let's see if this glugs. It'll glug a little bit, but... No, you see, that's how it should come out, you see. So we know the breather's good. Again, let's have a look at our magnet. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. That's nice clean oil as well, look at that. But you see, the thing is, you never know, do you? You never know, you can never tell. Uh, one thing I have noticed with this, there's no washer on it, so I'm going to go and get a washer. While we're uh, waiting for that oil to drain off, might as well grease up the prop shafts. The handy thing about being on a two-post lift here is we've got all the wheels off the ground so we can spin it when we're not worried about the four-wheel drive. So we've cleaned off the, uh, the nipple and uh, we've got a little tiny wire brush here. Just give them a quick rub off. There we are. And that pops off. They are a bugger sometimes to get on. The uh, Land Rover grease points are particularly bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take them all out and have, I have some longer ones to put in. The grease fittings are particularly difficult to get out sometimes or get your grease gun on. So what we're going to do is unscrew the old ones and put a longer one in. Oh, sir. They're just a little bit stubby to get out.
thing is you can't run with the long ones in because they'll break. You can see there, there's the, there's the short one and that's what we're going to put in, a longer one, just temporarily. I haven't found a grease gun yet that works, a grease fitting that works well on those. And now look at that, we can give it a real good old pumping up now, look at that. Get all that old stuff out. There you go. Ooh. Right. I'm going to get on with that and I'm going to do that for every joint. So the next thing we're going to do is drain the engine oil. Now, on this particular oil pan, now the oil sump here, it doesn't look a very good idea to drain it when the engine's hot because it's all going to flow straight onto the exhaust. So what we're going to do is let it drain for quite a long time. <coughs> look at that, straight, straight up the bloody exhaust. Look. What a crappy idea that is. Could have put it in the worst place. <laughs> well, it looks like I have to get the same thing out to that. This is why I charge so much for doing servicing. Most of it's cleaning up time. Look at this again. I think the oil was pretty thin because I had diesel in it from uh, when I was checking out the, uh, the cylinders. It isn't the end of the world, but it could do with a change. It's black and filthy. Uh, and then we'll drain off the swivel hubs once this is drained off. So we'll let that. Do oh, we're going to do the filter. The filter's never been changed in donkey's years. So we'll take that off and let it all drain off. An old joke with a Land Rover is that if it's not leaking, it's got no oil in it. Um, these swivels are remarkably dry, but we don't know if it's got grease or oil in. So what we're going to do is drain this, take this drain bung out here with a 10mm spanner while the engine oil is draining, and let's have a look. That's grease. Uh, that's oil, sorry and there isn't that much in. So what we're going to do here, of course they couldn't be, they couldn't have the decency to put the screws in the same size. 7 sixteenths. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll drain these off quite well. Oop. Drain these off for a long time while it's on the lift, and then we'll fill them with grease, and then they'll be good for a long, long time. Now this will allow air to go in. Yeah, that's kind of typical. What I'm gonna do. Do you know something? My, I could be wrong. I think it has got grease in. Tell you what. Let me go and get a stick or a screwdriver and poke it in that hole. Ah, so what I did was I put the, the, the tie wrap through the top of here and there's grease in it, so that's why it's not draining out. It must have been just a bit of residual stuff. So that's alright. We don't have to do that and that's why it hasn't leaked. We'll put the bungs back in. And then we'll check the other side. Easy. 
The next thing we're going to change is the oil filter. I've backed it off, but when I back it off I let it drain into a bucket first because it's got a bloody pipe right next to it. You know, like return pipe from the breather, which makes it difficult to get on. Now I've taken my jacket off. What a bloody daft idea. <laughs> the pipe goes right tight round it. <sighs> what a cracker's idea that is. What a s I've never seen anything so stupid as one idea. We've got oil everywhere. I think I'm going to have to take the hose clip off the, uh, the re oil return line to get it off. Bonkers. Right, let's get, get a screwdriver. I don't know if you can see my dilemma, but there's a pipe here that's clipped into the sun and you can't get the bloody oil filter off for it. Oh, I tell you, these guys who designed these cars never actually worked on them, I'm sure. And that's tight. What the heck's going on here? I am filthy. <laughs> what the heck's going on here? This has not been off for a long, long time. They should just spin off. There we go. Oh, what a mess. Right. That's unusual, isn't it? Right, now we're going to Fill the old oil, fill the new oil filter and put it on. We're going to put a partial lot of oil in, but first of all, I'm going to wash my hands. Yes. What a mess. Um, I always fit mild filters and I also give them a pre charge of oil, as you can see pouring out there, before I fit them. doesn't seem to want to go on. Oh, that's better. There's some like damage on that thread a little bit because it won't spin on. to get off, it must be the, the thread. Oh, it goes on now, look. Right. Aha. Right. Good nip up, but not too tight. And then we'll put this pipe back on there. I can't really see the screen what the hell I'm doing, but uh, put this pipe back on this sump here, Oops. and then uh, we'll get up and put some oil in. Now before I put the bung back in the sump, I'm just going to flush it through with a bit of clean oil, just to sort of wash away those last remnants of dirty oil. It doesn't, it will never flush it out, 
but it's a help if you see what I mean. So I've dropped it down on the car, I haven't dropped the stand down, that's why I'm looking down on you. But uh, I'm just going to pump some oil in and then we'll lift it up, put the bung in, drop it down, fill it full of oil. I know it sounds a bit of a palaver but I like to do it like that. <laughs> I've got my pump machine there pumping oil into the uh, engine. I'm just going to let it settle to see what the level is. Uh, I'm looking now at the uh, clutch fluid. That looks black. But it's not as bad as here. The rear brakes, uh, the brakes, there's no fluid in there at all. Hmm. So, looks like we're going to have to lift it up, take the wheels off and see what's happening with this fluid. And also if we can, which we probably can because it's right down there. You see, it's not bad access to this one. We'll bleed the clutch through as well at the same time. So I uh, filled it up to normal and then I started the engine to fill the oil filter up until the oil light went out and now it's dropped down to there. So I'm just going to fill it up to... Uh, I don't know why it's got normal anywhere between H and normal. Well, I think it would be uh, okay. It says danger up here, so you don't want to overfill it up there. Hmm, alright, let's do that. I've topped up the... Uh reservoir on the clutch master cylinder um, and I've just cracked off the pipe at the bottom what I'm going to do is I'm going to gravity flush this out I'm not going to do any fancy stuff because I've not dismantled any parts of the clutch at all so what I'd like to do is just let it drain into the bucket down below as I'm filling it up and then quickly tighten up the nipple Ooh, that word again and then um, it should be fine, and it'll f we'll do it until it flushes out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little brush, paintbrush and stir it around inside to get all the muck and gunge out, because it's the muck and gunge that wears out the seals. So I've let the fluid go down a bit. Top it up. With a little brush paintbrush keep chopping it up You'll get through quite a bit of uh, fluid, but at least you know it's clean inside, that's the main thing. And there, that's it. So that was uh, the, what we started with up to here, so we've used that much to flush it out. Um, let me come down here and I'll show you the results. So there you are, you see, all nice and clean. Didn't take that much, but fluid gets uh, uh, water in it because it draws water in from the atmosphere. So that, I'm happy with. I'm going to clinch up the bleed nipple. Oh, that word. And then I'm going to lift it up and then we're going to start to change all the rest of the oils. When you're finished with your old engine oil, you've got to dispose of it in an environmentally friendly way by throwing it over next door's fence. There, there's a good tip. Right, I just got back from next door's neighbours. You know, it's funny, 
He's got no weeds in his garden. Isn't that amazing? He's got no grass either. <laughs> right, let's take these wheels off. One of the first things I want to do before I uh, take the wheel off, I taped up most of the wiring harness, but round here it's a bit of a mess look. I can't get any tape in. So I'm going to put some plastic wrap on. Like this, uh, this sheathing. Wait a minute, zoom out. Like this sheathing we've got here. It really does protect it, and as you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So let me do that, and then I'll start to get this uh, wheel off. Look at all the, look at the muck in here. Uh, you know, oh, somebody's been beating this off. There's a great big chunk out of the drum. I don't know if you can see, you can see that. Big chunk out of there, but there's actually little jacking points in here, so that can get the drum off. Oh, I think it's three eighths, if I remember right, but it might be eight millimeters. They might have changed it. So let me tidy up that wiring and get this drum off. Well, here we go. <laughs> Another faller at the first fence. This screw. Do you know these military vehicles? I was almost led to believe they were in top maintenance condition. I don't think so. I don't think they've been looked after for years. They've never looked after these. They don't deserve a Land Rover. Toyota, that's what they want. Let it rust in peace. So to get them off, if you haven't got to just use a hammer and punch and turn the, uh, turn the screw, and then take the drum off, take the screw out. And then, with a 13 millimetre kit, see look it's got no, it's got nothing on there look. Dries are gone, we were lucky to get that out. And then just slip the drum off. <laughs> um, I can never remember which way these are. Yeah. So, we might have a problem here, Houston. Let's see if we can get this off real time. The adjuster doesn't seem to be having any effect whatsoever. Who knows what we're going to find inside. It's not leaking, so I don't know where the brake fluid's gone. And we've started on this one because it's furthest away from the master cylinder. That's sort of the way you're supposed to do these things. So you don't, all the, all the, all the provisions are there to take these off. You don't need to really beat them, to beat them. Easy was that? Put that one there. Ooh, look at those bad things. Now, so the snail cam, when you move it forwards, is doing bugger all. In fact, it's, it, I don't know, wait a minute, this is kind of interesting. Let's move this camera forward a bit. Oops, you can get out of the way. If we can see in here, let's get that light turned down a bit. Right. Can you see in here? This is a snail cam. Uh, it's not actually made from snails, but can you see when I turn it one way? Watch it. It, it doesn't turn. <laughs> Bugger. So let's have a look at that, see what's happening here. <clears throat> oh, it's got them bloody daft 
clips on underneath, haven't it? Hmm. Right, let me... I'll have to let you down a bit. Wait a minute. I moved my camera way down low, but... It's got some tab washers on these little 10mm nuts here. We need to take those off before I can get the shoes off. Um, the shoes are remarkably good. Um, but, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I've got a sneaking feeling that I'm going to have to take the whole hub off to do this assembly. But there's something wrong where either the welding's, welding's come off or something's happened. Let me see if I can get those 10mm off. Of course they're not 10mm, they're 3 8 Because you see these old drums, these 10 inch drums harken back to the old series trucks. <laughs> God they're primitive. How they got away with it I don't know. It must have cost more to do a like a disc brake, a drum brake than it did a disc brake. I mean, considering at the same time, at the same time of the year, they were doing in like 1990s, they were doing the discos with the drum, with the discs on the back. I bet they saved about 50 cents or something like that. Anyway, let's see what happens under there. So this little locking eye holds everything together. There we go. That's narrow. These shoes. <coughs> There's no, it, there's no spring at the top, it's just at the bottom. So, oh bugger it, I'm going to pull him off and see what happens. There. That's that off. And now, we'll have to put the, the camera up a bit higher. So at the bottom there's a spring pulling both shoes together. The, the back shoe is just a dead shoe, it's just flapping around like nobody's business. But the spring returns there's a return spring on the top, but it attaches to a pin behind the hub, which I'm saying, this is why I'm saying it's, we might have to take the hub off. So I'll put my girling tool on. Wait a minute. Let's see if I get it off like this. They're really awkward. Oh, that's, that's it, that's it. The spring goes under the, uh, the snail cam. <laughs> oh, what a crackers, bloody way doing the job. This is like 1920s type style. Right, now, we get the brakes off. Hurrah! Well, at least we don't have to change those. Well, what's happening here? I don't know if you can see. If I hold that there, the whole cam. Where's the uh, pliers here? Well, I've got the pliers. You could be you could be adjusting this to the end of time. See what's happening? It's turning here, so we're gonna. Fix that with a dub of weld. Now we're also going to bleed through these. Oh, damn it all. Oh no, there we are. I thought this, I thought the bleed screw had snapped off. That was that was going to make my day. Oh, look at that! It comes out. So, what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the same as a clutch. I'm going to bleed it from this side first. I'm going to bleed it through into a bucket uh, by gravity. Then we're going to put a double weld on it. We're going to go around all the rest of the brakes. And then we'll assemble it. Well, I'll show you how we assemble it. Whilst the uh, brake fluid is dripping away and changing, I just want to tap these cylinders. Yeah, they're moving. I'd liked him a bit freer than that though. Oh. Oh. They're, they're very stiff. 
Do you know something? I might clinch the uh, I might clinch the flexible pipe and, and take those pistons out and clean them up because uh, that's just a bit too tight. They should push backwards and forwards quite easy. So we freed off the piston and you can see how nice it is now. I'll put some of this Castrol red rubber grease on there so that should be good for a long time. Uh, we'll just let the fluid drain through and then we'll have to get the welder out to weld a little dob on there. So I'm going to get a wire brush and clean that piece up. While we're under here we might as well have a look at this drain bowl here for the uh, water separator. Now usually these little bungs are awfully tight and they don't seem to want to come off. That one's coming off look. There we go. Now I've got my drain bung underneath. See if there's any water in it. Yes, look at that water. Can you see it? See, it's not diesel. You see how you see? That's full of water. It's quite a bit actually. Boy, this isn't this is I was telling you this hasn't been serviced for years. Look at it. That crud there's a lot of crud coming out of there. Now it's starting to get a bit of diesel out now then. Tell its difference between water and oil, oil uh, water and uh, diesel. It's diesel's thinner. Yeah, that's it. That's all she's gonna get. Hmm. I think I might put a screw in there instead of that. Just hold on. So there we go. I put a five sixteenth. Uh, UNC bolt in the bottom with a with a washer, a steel washer and a rubber ring to to seal it off, and that should come out next time. But it's something to be aware of to drain off. Let's check them top bushes. These bushes are nice and tight. So, like I said, we've got um, got our piston moving in here. That's nice. Bled through. Next thing, we've got to weld that thing up there. Let me get the welder out. Well, perhaps not the most fantastic welds in the world to weld that cam on, but it's on. And you can see now when you move it, how the shoe moves in and out. All right, you can just barely see the cam turn in here. There you go. So that's all on. So the next thing I'm going to do is fasten those little uh, brackets under the, that, that eye and the two uh, three eighths bolts and then we can put the drum on and adjust it. I give the uh, hub flange a coat of anti-seize and the studs. Now we're going to fit the, the drum. Don't forget to put the screw in. Nice. Now we're going to adjust up the hub. We'll go forward until it's locked and then we come back one, two, three. That's all you need. Done. So we can put this wheel back on and then do exactly the same thing at the other side. Then we'll move to the front. Well there you go, a day in the life again. I've got all the back brakes done, the other side didn't need welding uh, but it was all stiff and seized up so we bled all the back brakes through shoes working fine, pistons working fine, they were seized up on that side too 
tomorrow pistons on the front uh, of the brakes might just take a shim out of that top joint I'm not sure maybe maybe not I'll see um, yeah but other than that it's not too bad actually it looks really really bad this car you know like with the paint and stuff like that but actually it's not too bad mechanically I think it'll be alright um, yeah so let's see what happens tomorrow